let's wrap it up let us wrap it up hey brother zach is over there please help us and share the grace it's okay it's okay let's trust some master please let's wrap it up 2023 is is okay guys see the shaking that i saw this year you know how old people used to say oh what old people can see season i cannot see that hey i saw it i saw everything i saw i was lying down i don't even need to sit down my eyes were closed and i was still seeing the shake i don't know if it was just me but 2023 was <laughs> this year started with like oh you know like everybody like energy more energy more energy more footwork more footwork more energy like this year like january was like oh chill february mm, march you know from like may okay, i was 24 this year 24 is a very very weird age because like you're smack in the middle of enjoying your youth and destroying your future hey, six years back you're 18 six years in front you're 30 so you go just look at everybody like this like okay once i crossed into 25 i was like okay i've arrived i've arrived i did not know that the the shege was just upgraded to like shege pro max that's the level i was she get unlimited is limited in jesus name please god i beg i beg see june from when it's me and i went to go, to go in somewhere from there i just they go where i don't know it just they carry me just they carry me going i don't know guys so i don't know if it's just me what 2023 was just not that year i know it sounds like i'm exaggerating but let me tell you how my year went what's up guys it's alma here so in this my final video of 2023 even though i haven't posted so many i just want to put together all of my highs and lows and everything that's happened this year um uh, kind of do like a recap and see how this year has gone for me and also hear from you to know how it has gone for you okay so <laughs> let's get right into it so january started off really chill it was my first month in canada like it was my first um i did my crossover i landed in canada december 28th the previous 2022 so i had just moved to london from my friend's place in toronto um on the 31st so i i crossed over into new year in london good thing i think one of the best things that i did one of the best decisions that i made when i moved to canada this year was to i think this camera is a little too high so, okay oh, perfect so one of the best decisions that i made this year or moving to canada was that i got an apartment before i arrived it was an expensive route because i had to get an airbnb and i got the airbnb i paid for one month um it was 2100 um it was 2100 canadian and then i reached out to the owner and i was like hey um it seemed like a new airbnb so it's like hey i'm in school um i have a few months to figure out what i'm gonna do and all of that but i would like to pay month on month and just rent your place right month on month and then see how things go from there so i signed the lease and i was paying month on month so instead of paying that 2100 i was paying 1900 and that was this is canadian dollars by the way 1900 canadian and that was actually one of the best decisions because i know that if i settling so settling in was very very easy for me um i just went to the apartment and i settled in that night i went grocery shopping got a few stuff um i was still trying to settle in to the city and you know start school and everything so that was good i think for as long as i've known myself like for as long as like my adult life even as a child actually i've been in school i finished uh not just school primary school, secondary school went straight to uni i didn't catch a break right after uni the next academic session i started my master's i finished the the two programs once i was done that was when i took a break for about a year and then i did this program actually i already started this program when i was in nigeria so it was a big thing so i've always been in school school has always given me a schedule right it has always given me like a bedrock like something that is very permanent so now once i was done with school in april ish things just started to change for me like i had to get used to um this new life of not having anybody drop a schedule for me and actually like own my life so 
more on that later but january you know everything was chill pretty chill so this is editing alma and i just wanted to say that that alma was the lulu she completely forgot about what happened in january january my house caught on fire actually my house my kitchen caught on fire and i was trying to fry plantain once in once in once in anyways a very long story but i didn't have tenant insurance or travel insurance in this case because i was just i was moving i had just moved here i hadn't even settled i was just like a few days in and then my house caught and then my kid the, the fire happened and so i had to sink most of my savings um money that i had set aside for my rent for you know that period because you know i was in a month on month i was like okay this is the amount that i have for my rent money that i have for that i had to take it and use it to um you know pay for damages and everything and it was a lot of money um so yeah that actually happened in january and it got 2023 off to a very rocky start but hey we made it so yay i started to post a lot about my trip to lebanon and you know i want to just recap all my trips so far but the lebanon ones seem to have stuck and a lot of people you know were like oh my god i want to go i want to go and i was like you know what i've been stalling on launching kajago officially um this seems like a good opportunity so we launched our first group trip and we went to lebanon in march that trip sold out in 24 hours lebanon was such a hot cake now it's just because of the the whole everybody like the airspace is just not safe around that area so people don't really go anymore but when everything clears up i really hope that you go january was fantastic february same thing um january ending i went to india went to addis ababa that's when i went to um get my hair braided in addis ababa during my labor that was fun um i went to the maldives you know it was really cool it was pretty chill everything was good march i came back you know i same thing i had another I think I, no, it was not March was when we had our first official group trip. That was in Gen uh, to Lebanon. Um, so March I went to Lebanon, did everything. April, May, May was when May was my birth month, and that was when I turned twenty five. So guys, let me tell you, that's when the turnaround began. May like this. I had such an awful month because I was dealing with so much. I was so worried about turning 25. Like, I don't know what the burden was, but I was just so worried about turning 25. It's just a round figure. And it just gave me some form of anxiety. And I went to... I went to the UK for the first time. This was in May. It was also my first v UK visa application. My friend... I would call my friend, um, Fisayo, or I will call my friend anybody actually that i was going to okay actually at that time i remember one specific time i called fisario and i think while we we're on the call i was just like oh my god what is this like i just had this sudden like fear and then i ran to my passport i don't know why i just had this fear that my that the visa would disappear or something so i ran to for my passport i was wondering like, what's going on what's happening and i ran to my passport and then I was like, oh my god, my, my, my UK visa is there. I was so excited because that was my first main visa. That was my first major visa, apart from like my Canadian study permit. Okay, now it's getting hot. It's just get rid of this thing. So I went to the UK in May. Um, it was great trip. I didn't even really need to do too much. The UK because I had friends and I had people there. So May, then I got back and then I went to mexico so it was supposed to be a group trip but so many people cancelled because so this was very tricky for me this was actually one of the most tricky things that i had to deal with um so it was a group trip for eight people so many people cancelled last minute because um um they couldn't process the visas because some of them were in nigeria they couldn't process the visa the whole process was a little too tedious they were like you know what? we'll just move our trip to move the deposits and the payments that we made to another trip which is what i do um this is that's part of our policies at kaijago so you can actually do that and then they did that and then you know so we were only three on the trip I was like, should I cancel it? Should I not? Blah blah blah. And you know, I just I just didn't know what to do. But yeah, I made it work and then I canceled I, I didn't cancel it. We actually went on the trip. But let me just specify why this month was even more of a hassle than it was than it seemed. So May 
I started a job after I was done with school. I got a I got a part time job actually in April. Starting I started April 13th. I just wanted to have something that paid my rent because I wanted to fully move my um move my would I say my make Kaijego my full time job. And so it was a difficult switch for me because making Kaijego my full time job meant that I had to. Um, crack down on creating personal content. Like I had to put everything together. I was in strategy meetings with engineer, with our designer. Where is the website? Where is the blog post? I was going back and forth and back and forth. And guys, that was not an easy phase at all. And so cranking down on my my personal content creation and everything means taking less brand deals or even getting less brand deals get so the more i post the more visible i am i mean it makes sense that and that's that and so the more brands reach out to me right so the fact that i didn't post a lot meant that I, I wasn't that visible and i also didn't get a lot of inbounds so i was really busy building kajego getting it off the ground you know launching the website and everything and it was such <laughs> it was such a time guys Whew. okay so um may was also like there was something else i mean yes exactly so this the reason this month was the way it was was that amidst all of the things that i was doing um my lease month on month lease had come to an end with the rent the place that i was staying at now where i was staying at it was a one bedroom apartment it was an airbnb so it was fully furnished everything i needed was there i just needed to buy groceries and all of that and i was good now this rent was this thingy arrangement was coming to an end i needed to find an apartment for you to find an apartment in canada you would do like this for you to find a place that like i i've always loved one of the things i told myself when i was coming to canada was that i was not going to share an apartment with anybody it doesn't matter if i eat a for breakfast lunch and dinner but you see me sharing my space i'm not gonna do that i think it was more of an ego thing where i felt like i've done well for myself and i'm doing very well for myself in nigeria so if i'm moving from nigeria to a new place i don't want to even think that i'm going backward like i'm coming here and i'm starting again so i just kind of wanted my own space at the very least that's the luxury that i i like to enjoy i have the tv to myself i have the kitchen to myself i have the room to myself i can play loud music when i want all those good stuff anyway so that's what i wanted and now my time at this place was coming to an end so it was time for me to get an apartment for you to get an apartment in canada like i said you're gonna do like this but it's not even about finding what you want you might find what you want you might have the budget but you have to apply so unlike where i was coming from nigeria you find an apartment that you like by god's grace if you find the lagos agents that are sharing they're now selling they're renting out slices of houses you see is the kitchen you have to enter side like <laughs> you have to enter side you have to end up with the side but you don't enter inside anyway so I was like, okay, you you need to um, so you, you need you find a place that you like, you find a realtor, you find someone like whatever, you find an apartment, you find something within your price point. Now you apply. When you apply, they're considering a lot of things. And I I only had a study permit. I didn't have a work permit. I didn't have a full time job. I was doing freelancing, freelancing. I'm a content creator. I'm this one and that one. I didn't have any like steady income like i would say like pay slips they usually like to see pay slips and know that okay your income you get this amount in salary every month and you work for this company and you've worked at this company for three years four years so that they kind of feel like secure in their decision to let you rent the apartment knowing that you pay your rent every month I was still this one all this while i was still adjusting to the fact that you have to pay rent monthly by god's grace in 2024 one of my goals is to pay my rent for the year like at once my rent expires now and i'm sure that i want to stay in this apartment one of my goals is to pay my rent for the for the entire year pay up front because the thought of actually having to like remove the money oh god and if you're not converted to naira don't do that don't do it i'm only saying that for the for the purpose of this video but if you're not converted to naira you just want you like what am i paying how much i will pay for a year in nigeria for one month here and then you pay bills you pay internet you pay phone you pay insurance you pay this one like 
Ah, oh, guys. May was so tough. I say, okay, let me apply by faith. The very first apartment I applied for, I got it. I'm not sure why that, what that noise is about. Anyway, the very first apartment that I applied for, I got it. And how I did that was, thankfully, by God's grace, around April, around April, just around the time I was leaving, like after my last um, apartment um, rent expired, I got a freelance, I got a job. It was a part-time job, like um, what they call it, Tishan Nomad, what's that thing? Remote. It was a part-time remote job. So I just needed it was a copywriting thing, something that would take me like one hour to do in a day, two hours. So I I, I was killing it there and I was doing it and I was I wanted to just get a job that would at least give me my rent. Since I knew for sure that I wasn't doing full-time job and I, I, I wanted to I wasn't doing content like that again and I wanted to focus on Kajago, I just wanted to know that at least I'm not gonna sleep on the street. Even if I don't travel, I'm not gonna sleep on the street. And that's what happened. That's what happened with that job. Thankfully, that job it was not what I applied for like two days or three days ago that I got the job today. I applied for that job apparently in December before I left Nigeria. So my advice for you, if you're leaving Nigeria, you're moving out and you want to start looking for a job when you get to the place, like go on LinkedIn, go on Indeed, go on everywhere. Apply, like send out applications everywhere. You just never know, right? I applied in December and they got back to me in April just at the convenient time when I needed it. Also, I had finished school and I felt like, you know, I actually need to um, get a job for a while. Like, you know, um, since it's remote, right? I can build Kajago like here. I can build Kajago, but then I also kind of need to have a job. I decided that I wanted to get a job for like, you know, first for the foreseeable future and see how I can balance everything. Since I wasn't traveling as well. I mean, I didn't have any money to be traveling. So I I kind of said, I was like, you know what? Okay, I'll, I'll take a job. So um, during that period, I started a new job. And this new job actually paid well i mean it would have paid very well like it would have paid very well if i was still living in nigeria but the fact that i was living here in canada now kind of made it um it was just okay so it paid me enough so at this point i covered i could cover my rent i could cover a lot of all the moving expenses getting some furniture and all of that from my one month rent for my one month salary rather which was really good now this job was not stable because after two months I had to leave. I wasn't there. I, I, I had to leave the job after two months. The, it was just a whole thing. It's a long story. But, and I don't know why I always attract drama, drama infested workplaces. Anyway, so, but the good thing is, the job came at the right time when I, I, I need, when I needed documents to prove, you know, I, I work full time, I work here, or I have an employer, I have this one, I have that one, I have this kind of income and that income. Um, so it was easy for me to just get all those documents and then apply. That's why I cannot leave my house now. Because when I leave my house now, I don't know how I'm going to be explaining that I'm, I am doing a <laughs> I'm a travel content creator. Please, if you should give me, give me, give me, uh, this, give me hours to sleep in a bag. Like, if you don't have a nine to five, they just usually just do you like this. Anyway, I applied for my very first job. I'm uh, my very first apartment, and I got it. This was in May. This was late April actually, because I moved in. My lease started first of May. So, um, to solidify my application, what I did was I reached out to my friend, who is a permanent resident right now. My family friend, like. So I just know that okay, they said that if I don't pay my rent, it's you that are going to come and hold. He said no problem. So he gave me all his details, he signed all the papers, everything as my guarantor, right? So they, if you have a if you have a friend that's maybe like that has PR or is a citizen, they're usually more comfortable renting to PR holders and citizens because well, anyway. So that's what I did. First apartment I applied for, I got it, loved it. Starting for me to um, put furniture and everything, and I started. I mean, I started small, small. I got my couch. I actually, guys, I don't know if it's just me, but when I get to an apartment, if I don't have a TV, I feel like a peasant. Like I can, I can actually have no single spoon in the kitchen. I can have no chair, no nothing, but I will have a TV. You know what? I'm gonna spread the Hollandis 
on the ground and I'll watch TV. I will sleep on the ground with the Olandis on the ground and everything will be fine with the world. I went to Walmart. I bought one 65 inch TV, guys. This is, this is not adulting advice, but you have to spark joy. You have to do something that, you know, eh. Hey. So, I got a TV, started my life in this new place. I was, everything was okay, it was chill. I went, to, I went to the UK May, then I came back, then I went to Mexico again for the group trip, then I came back, and then June. Now, <laughs> so here's the thing. When I came to Canada, my study permit was supposed to expire in July. Also, my visa was supposed to apply, uh, expire in July as well. So, study permit and visa expire in July. The thing is, after school, I'm eligible for a postgraduate work permit. I finished school, running everything up in April. I had trips in May, and I knew I needed my passport and everything, so I couldn't send in my this thing. I needed, I couldn't send in any application or anything ahead yet because I wanted to travel, come back, settle down, and then start the process. The other reason why I couldn't send my application in yet was because my passport was supposed to expire 2024 February. And because of that, if you send in an application for a postgraduate work permit, um, they would only give you the duration of the work permit, which is one year or three years, depending on how long you studied, or they give you up until the expiry date of your passport. So if your expiry date, of, if the expiry date of your passport is not even up to one year, they won't give you your full one year postgraduate work permit. They only give you for the eight months or nine months that you have on your passport. And I didn't want that because I didn't want to have to come back and reapply and everything. So I needed to get a new passport. May ended, everything was fine. June, I came, after I came back from Mexico, I was like, okay, time for me to face this large ass elephant in the room. So I was like, hmm, okay, I need to get a passport. Getting a passport, see, let me tell you, any consulate, any Nigerian, go to the Nigerian consulate in Ottawa, is Nigeria. You are in Nigeria. Go to the and from what I've heard, you go to the one in New York, the same thing. The one in the London town, the same thing. Nigerian is Nigerian consulate, Nigerian embassy, everything is just the same everywhere. Ha! <sighs> so they will not answer their phone. Email, no, not nothing. You are just stuck on your own. So I now had to look for the next available appointment. So I looked through the documents, everything required and everything, and I was fine, right? I was set. Next available appointment was October 6th. Guys, my study permit is supposed to expire July. The next available appointment, that's appointment though, for me to carry the passport, the old passport to go to the, and drop it for them to process the new one. The appointment though, not the date of the, <laughs> So I was just looking at this thing like this. I called, 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 nobody answered. Sent to me, sent to me, nobody answered. I said, wahala. And I was booked the October 6th. I was in my house like this. June 1, June 2, June 3, June 4. I was like, what is going on? June 5th, I booked a flight to Ottawa for the next day, 6th. I said, I'm going there. My, uh, what they call it? My, <laughs> my appointment is October 6th. But I'm gonna go tomorrow. Anything else, I'll prepare it, I'll prepare it, I'll go there. I'll find a way I must get it done. And my audacity these days, I don't even know whether they used to sell it again. It's no, it's no longer, it's as if I bought it in, in, in bulk that year. I went to Ottawa the next day, October 6th. I carried my papa and I don't even pack. So that's how you even know that I don't even really send. I'm like, whatever happens, it's gonna happen. Share your family now. It's gonna happen. So we're gonna be here today. Today, today is the day we're gonna be here. I packed my, carried all the documents that I needed, carried one shaggy handbag. This handbag, was this bag? This bag. I not carry carry on or anything, you know, to plan to or even book Airbnb or anything. Let me know. I'm gonna sleep. I know. I said no. It's too die you. We die. Okay, we're not dying. You just say, but like, eh. Uh -huh. So I got there. I booked the first flight. Got there. Everything was normal, normal. I just walked in. Like a normal person, even if someone should see me, they think that this person is okay dead. But I was carrying October 6th appointment date on June 6th and I was walking and I joined the queue. <laughs> and I actually joined the queue. When the man, you know, 
my turn. Like this, the man now looked at me, I looked at him. He said, where is your appointment slip I gave him? He now looked at the dates, October 6th. I was just, I was just like, wow. Oh, I'm sorry, October? I didn't, I mean, I was hoping that the 6th, six, 6th six would come for something, but apparently not. Anyway, so, kicked me out. <laughs> As expected, <laughs> he kicked me out. He said I should go and wait outside. He said I should go and okay, no, no, no. They gave me, <laughs> they gave me, they gave me a how many minutes have I been talking for? Oh my goodness, twenty three minutes. I'm actually so they gave me a what they call it now. They gave me an email address that I should email this. I should send an email and let them know that I need an urgent appointment. Blah 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 blah. So I sent the email to say somebody will reply, give me a date for me to come back. As far as I was concerned, I just wanted I wanted to know when I was getting my passport back. That was my own. Did not reply. I was standing there. A lot of people that I came with, you know, left and everything. Or not that I came with, like that were there around the time I was there. They left. I was like, okay, no bohala. I was there. I was and I was like, oh, I will be begging, like, please now. Like, even and I was even ready to like, oh, is there anything if you want me to start cleaning. I will clean. By the time I do everything I need to do here now, I just give my paper, help me and do it, and I'll go home. I was ready to do anything. Hand glove, I'll wear it and start doing the work in the embassy. I'm Nigerian, I'll just blend in. Nobody gets to know. So, they know I speak. <laughs> they said I should go and uh, I should go and wait outside. I should go and send the email. I should wait for the email. Blah, blah, blah. I was like, Nigerians have the email, please. People should not use this one to post me. Eventually, that day, I think. What happened eventually? I got I got to Ottawa around like seven. In before they even opened, I was there. So I waited till around like two. Around two. They were gonna close by I think 3 30 or 4. Around two. There's a couple that came from Vancouver in the God sent. God sent. There was a couple that came from Vancouver. They had a baby. They both had their passports, but they wanted to get the passport for the baby. And the baby, you know, they wanted to travel, something, something. So they came in and they were begging and begging and asking, please let them just do it today. They say you don't have an appointment today or you missed your appointment, something, something like that. It's like, oh, please, now let's just do it. They not agreed. They, they were begging, begging, begging. Me, I was just there in the corner because me, I've already collected in sort. I've collected no, I've collected L, everything that day. I was, I was immune at this point. So I was just standing at the corner. I'm like, you should go and try your luck. So eventually one person now came out. I was now talking to them. They were now explaining that, oh, that they would have actually gone back to, you know, um, stay in a, an Airbnb or a hotel or something. And then they would have come back the next day or something, but they don't have everything that they need for the baby. Right. So, and they're coming from Vancouver, blah, blah, blah. So like, they just want to do, so there was now a man that came out and was now like, oh, okay that he will help them so at the time when he just started to say sound like i saw that the conversation was going you know like ah, the man was starting to pity them i was just shifting 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 <laughs> i was just shifting and this the guy that initially told me to go back opened the door like he tried to like signal me like come inside come inside yeah but so immediately he just opened the door i just got there i just like slipped in i was like oh thank you thank you sir thank you sir i was not really thanking the man when you're not even saying like it's way helping anybody i just wanted to join with them it's like oh thank you sir thank you thank you thank you this man was looking at me i was thanking him i never look at his face i was just thanking him thanking him then he started to bring the passport i brought out my this thing and gave him the document so i was looking at me i was looking at him back yeah, because i not carry baby eh is it why you're looking at me <laughs> because i'm not being picky so don't do that don't do that to me so i did the application that's how it was now time for me to do the capturing whatever whatever take pictures i was toasting the man there i was like after ah, so i should show me the picture before you snap it because this is 10 years old 10 years that we're talking about if the picture is not ugly ah so i was just giving the man a sign i was like ah, please now just show me so the man was like okay like you take the picture i'll look at it he says i'll say this one, let's try again I did the second one at this point i was even over it so when we not when, it was not time to like do all the, the paperwork and all of that then i said that I, this one i was ready to go everything was fine we are ready finished then i said that oh that one name is missing from my name my nin is on my passport but it's not on my nin goodness goodness gracious god 
I say I don't know. When I was doing my NIN, they said I cannot feel more than one name, like one middle name. So I only feel the first my first middle name. They said that I should I have to go and add it. And I have to wait for it to reflect. That's for like a week before they will not start processing the passports. God guys. When am I going to go and change the NIN? This was Friday. Was it Friday? I don't know. When I, where was I going to um start processing the NIN? They said they gave me the address of somebody in Ottawa there. So I had to go there, process it. After processing, I came back. <sighs> I came back to the embassy. Then once in, once in, once in, something, everything I needed, and then I eventually left. So I got back to long story short, I got back to London because I couldn't find any flights going to London. I had to like fly to Toronto and then go from Toronto to London. And my own was that I wanted to sleep in my bed that night, and I did because I got home around midnight. <clears throat> and yeah that was a successful one so now we wait right the wait has just begun for the how many minutes now 29 minutes i'm actually chow, 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 chow. the wait had just begun for the passport so now i had to wait one month for the passport to come out first mm? before i now <laughs> i now start applying finally now apply for the work permit then now work permit is not taking another like one month ish before it should not come out after it comes out then i now have to apply for my visa so that i can go out and come back inside canada so i was looking at three months and it was not even funny so it came out my passport came out after begging and begging and talking to the man that you know that i knew there and he you know like i got my passport in a month i got my passport like i think july 3rd or july 4th yeah it was a month so i sent in my application for um my work permit application around like for early july it was supposed to at that time i think this was peak period so many people have finished school some people study permits were expiring as well so i'm sure that they had a lot of applications now i had a group trip in september end of september like middle of september september 10th this was egypt and jordan and i wanted to make sure that everything just came out in time for me to actually go for the group trip it didn't go it didn't go as planned <laughs> it did not go as planned guys because tell me why my work permit came out after when i was in jordan like this was i planned in july it came out in september the implication of this is that once you apply for your work permit you are now on implied status so you no longer you're not a student you're not a worker you're just somewhere in the middle right especially after your study permit has expired so I didn't know about flag polling early enough. I mean, actually I knew about it, but I didn't think it was an option. I didn't consider it an option early enough. If not, I'd have just done it. And I didn't know it was going to take this long. If not, I'd have just done it. But I had to, um, I had to wait. After applying, I was now on implied status, which means that if I leave Canada, I can't come back. The implied status is valid for as long as you're there, right? So. If I, I have to wait for my my study permits, my work permits to come back and then use the work permit to apply for a visa. Even with the work permit alone, I can't come back into Canada. I need a visa like stamped on my passport. So, hmm, and I can only apply for that visa after I have the work permit. So I said, let me just go for the group trip. I had to think about it. If I say I'm not doing the group trip again, I have to find somebody that will chaperone the trip, not me and if i want to find somebody that is going to do that the person has to have an um has, has to we have to process the person's visa and you know the person has to be able to actually you know like take people on a group trip i was like what is going on the other alternative would have been to cancel the trip now this trip has been like it has people have started booking the trip from february this was september people are started booking for february so i don't know how i'm going to explain to them that we are, we are not doing a gain I'm not start making refunds or what I beg I will explain and then the hotels everything was already booked so I was just like god please please and then I booked my flights everything I called IRC everything 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 anyway Sha, I went to Egypt I don't have my work permit I don't have work permit I don't have study I don't have work permit I don't have study permit I don't have visa I don't know how to come back to Nigeria I will come back to Canada I left the status there and I left. So the minute I left Canada, I lost my status. I was like, you know what? We're gonna do this. 
I'm just gonna be in Nigeria and everything. Thankfully, I was like, you know what? I actually have to be in Nigeria by October ish because I have to go for a US visa application anyway, like a US visa interview anyway. So I'll just, I know I'm going to be in Nigeria for a while, but let me see how things go. So that's how I said I was going, oh my god, I'm talking too much. Anyway, so that's how I said that, okay, well, I'll just do, I'll just stay in it okay i will do all the trips that i want to do and then go back to nigeria if i still don't have my work permit so by the time i got to egypt my work permit came out and then at least that was a great start it's a great place to start so egypt you know everything happened in egypt it was fun but the parts some parts of it were also not so fun because like it was just a very somehow true to be honest the people i egypt didn't really like i think it's still my worst country visited till date um not saying you shouldn't go please go if you need to if you see the pyramids whatever you like it's fun i'm sure some people have different opinions so please don't take this as like travel advice this is just my personal experience i didn't exactly love it because i felt people were just being a little hostile and then that's when they're not trying to extort you or it was just not really giving like that you guess so i was like yeah okay fine whatever egypt was done Time for me to leave Egypt and head to Jordan. Egypt Air, they, they were racist to me at the airport and then they threw away my luggage. Till today, I still don't have my luggage. I've had to buy everything back from scratch. I had to buy a new camera, two lenses, buy my tripod, buy my mic, buy everything back. And I've spent almost 4 million naira in the process. But we move, we move, we move, we move. No compensation, nothing, nothing from them. Everything is just. They invited me to their office, you know, after I made a video, I was like, oh, and then in that office, anyway, I've been advised to not say this yet, because I'm still, you know, working out with my lawyers, but, yeah, it was not a very good experience. Don't fly Egypt Air, guys, don't do it, don't do it, guys, don't do it, especially if you are this color, don't do it, darlings, don't do it. So, I was like, okay. I don't have my luggage the whole of my trip to jordan is ruined because i had i had collaborations that i was going to do while i was in jordan and most of the things that i needed were in the luggage so yeah that was gone um so everything ended jordan trip ended i got back home also i would actually also mention this that i made a very big mistake when i was you know like when it comes to like the trip fund for those trips so there was a period where there was a drastic drop in like there was a drastic change in the exchange rates and that period really affected me because many kajago trips are priced in dollars and we we interact in dollars with all the vendors all the hotels everything is in foreign currency but some people um that join kajago trips that live in nigeria like to pay in naira so they pay by bank transfer or anything so Needless to say, that period was not funny for me at all. So most of the trip was like, it was just me like, God, please, let's just, let's finish this trip and let me go home and lie down. Let me go to my mother's house and lie down. I was going to go to Qatar and Saudi. I had issues at the airport. I thought I lost my luggage. I was like, you know what? Reroute heading to Nigeria earlier than expected. And so I got to Nigeria and I was just chilling and everything was chill. I was staying in my mom's place. You know, I was eating my mom's food. I was just like, okay, well, let's see what else is left of this year. Then that same month, I went out. I wanted to go to, I was going to the UK. I wanted to use my visa a second time so that I can apply for five years and say, oh, I go to the UK often. Anyway, so I wanted to use my, my visa a second time in six months so that they think, okay, you go a lot, so yeah, you can just get five years. Anyway, so I wanted to go to the UK. I had some payments to make, blah, blah, blah. So I went and I withdrew um, from my dumb account. Someone made a payment for something. I wanted to pay it into another vendor's account. So I made a pay, I made a withdrawal from my dumb account and I went to Allen. So around Allen, I wanted to pick up a loaned camera from the Sony store. I wanted to, and I wanted to deposit money in the bank. I also wanted to change money. So I felt like, you know, I would, when I go there, I'll just do everything that I needed to do. Now, and I have a guy, <clears throat> right? I have a dollar guy. Um, when I'm like at least when I lived in Nigeria, he was my go-to person. When I want to exchange money, you know, I just call him, give him the money, give this person. So then I just deposit it actually into his account, and he sends me the naira. So we had that kind of relationship. It was chill. This time, 
the Uber driver first dropped me at the wrong Sony. So he dropped me at the Sony for TVs and sound systems, but I was going to Sony Alpha, right? Like for cameras and stuff. So I was just like, mm, it's not, it's, it's walking distance. So I was not like, okay, let me just walk the the journey, the rest of the trip. So I just decided to walk and then I, as I was walking, I saw some guys changing money. I was like, you know, what, okay, I, maybe I should just, just change it here since I'm, it's already on my way. Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, say Shege Pro Max. Shege Pro Max. That was what I was about to see because I got scammed. One thing led to the other, I lost $700. It was a very tragic day for me. And I'm saying this right now in hindsight because it's, it's, a, it's a whole thing. It's really difficult for me to wrap my head around it. But my father came to Lagos. He went to Allen for, I think they went there, patrolled the area, blah, 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 found the people that did it and then retrieved a chunk of the money back which is a last story for another day but <clears throat> that period was very devastating because i was struggling to get back on my feet i had all my stuff i can't you know you know those in Hollywood movies when you go and make noise ah my child has gone to the abroad they've gone to the bodo they've done this they've done that and then they don't have to deposit the child, so the child now come back with bako bag or nylon, just one bag to the village. You not be laughing stock. That's how I came back home. That's how I came back to Lagos because Egypt Air trip with my luggage. So I came back to only the personal item. That's the same bag. That's all I was carrying on that flight. My laptop, you know, my laptop that was inside the luggage, so everything was gone. So um, I was already trying to deal with that loss, and then this one happened again, and just. I, it was just shortly before I went to the UK and I was just like god, please like what is happening and my mom was just not comfortable and she she's very spiritually sensitive thank you mom she's very spiritually sensitive I noticed it too I felt it too but I just felt like what's happening meanwhile my mom came to my room I think the night before I was supposed to leave to the UK she held my hand and she cried like she prayed and she was like god whatever this thing is this loss this thing this whole pattern at the end and while i was lying there and i was kind of i was sleepy i was half asleep when she, she was making the prayers tears were coming out of my eyes it was such an emotional moment for me but after that time things started to look up because i went to the uk for one thing i was not in lagos so yeah and i went to stay with Onye, and then we went to belfast and she made me cake and jello fries and chicken and i had so much fun and then just as i was supposed to come back to lagos i missed my flight actually technically i know i could have been on that flight because when i got there they were checking in the last person and you know normally i could have just said oh just like check me because i mean they were just checking in the last person they're like oh we've closed and I was like, oh, okay, sure. I turned around. I was not ready to go back to Lagos one bit. But I had to go back because I had, this was a Sunday. I had to, um, I had my, my um, US visa appointment on Wednesday. So when I couldn't make the flight on Sunday, I had to just pay the no-show fee and I rescheduled for Monday. So Monday and then I was supposed to arrive on Tuesday. And then the appointment was Wednesday. So Wednesday came, went for the interview. I got the visa. I was so excited. Things started to look up, right? So I now started to make plans to um I started to make plans to go back. And let me even talk about this. So once I landed, I flew on Ethiopian Airlines when I was going to the UK. Once I landed in Addis Ababa and I got internet, I saw that um my my visa, my 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 Canada visa had been approved right now this visa when i checked online it said that it was going to take 325 days from nigeria 140 days from the uk and about 30 days from the us so my plan was that since i now have my work permit and i got it like sometime in september since i now have my work permit if it's going to take 300 and something days in nigeria maybe i shouldn't apply for my visa there let me just wait till i get my u.s visa and then when i get to the u.s i'll apply for it there it's going to take 30 days i'll just stay in the u.s with my family and then i'll be fine whenever the visa comes then i'll go to canada from there that's my plan unbeknownst to me the lord god was was really working things out for me because i was like you know what let me just apply leap of faith i applied and i got the visa in about two weeks or three um so by the time i got back 
from them saying that the visa was now available or was now ready it was approved and all of that i was like okay sure okay <laughs> let's see how this goes and then so i went to the uk i came back but i was like you know let me go for my u.s appointment first and then because the u.s own they'll give you back your passport in like two or three days after the um after the interview if you get the visa right so i was like you know let me just go do the interview send my passport to them they'll give me back in like two or three days then i would send it to canada because canada gives you 30 days from when they tell you it's approved for you to send your passport to them so i sent my passport and i was like i'm going to port harcourt i'm not doing lagos again i'm done with you guys i went to port harcourt i was there chilling the monday that i got the mail saying that oh my passport has reached ircc office guess what i saw on the news fire there was fire in the ircc office i called everybody callable i was like gay help me out pray help me out stand in the gap because i'm like what is happening what if they've fire has bought my passport what am i going to explain and the passport has new us visa it has my uk visa it has everything inside you people should please free me ha <sighs> anyway apparently there was no cause for alarm because my passport came back real quick actually <laughs> Came back in record time so now i had my us visa and i had my uk um, my canadian visa and i was happy to go back so i booked my flight and i went to the us for the first time um i spent some time with family it was such a refreshing time it was such a refreshing time I spent some time with family um and then i went back to um went back to the u i went back to canada i went home i was in my apartment for the first time in like two or three months and i was like wow okay so i know now they're doing live show anyway so i was back in my apartment and it was so it was such a beautiful feeling guys i don't even know how to explain it but um i had two more trips for the rest of the year one to panama and the other one to cuba which is where i'm currently in right now i'm currently in cuba if you can see the classic cars that probably gave it away but i'm currently in cuba and on my last final trip for the year you guys i came here i, I went to panama i spent a couple of days panama is now my top country of the year um and then i'm in cuba and i'm a lot of things have happened all the while that i was here such that i actually had to you know cancel my trip back home and just i had to stay here to even like stay here through christmas it's a whole story for another day but i'm just like you know what i'll be fine i'm good as long as i'm safe as long as i'm alive as long as i'm holding it on i mean i'm holding on and i'm holding it in and i'm getting it this year i'm fine this year has been quite the year and you guys you guys have been with me through it all my inconsistency on youtube um but you've been here on instagram and on twitter and on tiktok and everywhere else that i've actually been consistent thank you so much for doing 2023 with me i'm looking forward to everything that we do in 2024 and i'm excited for all the announcements and all the good things and everything that's gonna happen because all the shigging we have exhausted them in 2023 can i hear an amen amen okay guys thank you so much for listening and for watching my year in review my 2023 i hope you enjoyed it share something with me um that you liked in this video share something that you resonated with and anything you just feel like just let me know say something to me in the comments okay come on don't don't be i've talked for like 45 minutes now so please talk to me in the comments i'll be right there i wish you such an amazing 2024 one that's just as amazing as you are and i cannot wait to see you next year having a lot better experience having a much richer experience also hitting your travel goals because because this year I also decided that I'm dedicating next year to intentionally and personally helping you reach your travel goals so I decided to launch a community um, where I will be directly giving you 
travel advice you can ask me anything so if you want to get a visa if you want to do this you want to do that oh alma what's the cheapest flights to take for this date and that date i'm going to um qatar from lagos or i'm going to canada from lagos and I'm, i booked this flight do i need a transit visa oh have you seen any um have you do you know what 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 country i should apply for if i want to get a schengen visa quickly if i want to get an easy um, if I want to get an easy yes, if I want to get a long-term visa, oh, um, what what airline should I do? How should I get like points, travel miles, and how can I travel for free? How can I travel like anything? Travel you want to know? I'm gonna be at your disposal for a whole year. And if you want to join that community, the link is in my bio. Between now and i've extended the time but between now and january 10th if you join the community you get to pay 190 dollars instead of 250 after january 10th it's gonna be 250 dollars up until and then registration closes february 28th i was gonna say like 31st of february 28th so or like if like we reach a number that we can't like if we have to Offer last while stock lasts. How they say it in Upper Iwika. Anyway, <laughs> so if this interests you, feel free to check the description box. I'm gonna leave the link there. Thank you so much for listening to this almost one hour of me just to join. Thank you so much. I'll see you in 2024. Mwah, 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 mwah.